Hi, everybody. I'm going to talk about the finite divided difference, which is also often known as simply the finite difference. The finite difference method is a way to uh, numerically estimate a derivative. So it's a way to um, look at the derivative of a function in such a way that you can program your computer to calculate it. Um, now, typically, your computer is not able to do calculus directly, but we can uh, make an approximation of the uh, calculus function that we want to perform, in this case, the derivative, and then allow our computer to actually do that. So the way we do that is we estimate the derivative as a slope, a simple slope, um, like we learned in our math classes a long time before we started college. So I'm going to graphically demonstrate how this is done first, and then later on we will uh, derive our finite difference function from a Taylor series. But for now, we're going to look at this graphically. OK, to show this graphically, we'll start off with a graph of a function. As usual, this will be just a randomized function. Now, in order to actually find a finite difference approximation for a derivative, you'll need to know the equation of your function. So like I mentioned before, with the uh, root finding methods, if you don't have an equation for your function, you'll have to get an equation first, either by some kind of regression or interpolation. So let's say we want to find derivative of this function at this point. and this corresponding y value. So the way we're going to find the derivative is this. Um, now before we get into that, I'm just going to remind you that the derivative is a fancy calculus way of saying slope. Now, typically, when we calculate a slope, our slope is going to be, say, the slope of a line. That's going to be, in the case of a line, it's a constant slope at every location on the line. A derivative comes into play more when you have a function where the slope changes with x. So the derivative is typically the slope at a given location. Now, we're going to estimate the slope at this given location by selecting another point. So we're going to select a second point here second x value, we'll call this x i sub plus 1. And we'll look at the y value at that location as well, which will be f of x sub i plus 1. Now, in order to estimate the slope, we're trying to estimate the slope at x sub i, so here. So we'll estimate that slope by drawing a straight line between these two points that we've just defined at x sub i and x sub i plus 1. And then we will find the slope of that line. So to find the slope of a line, we'll use our slope calculation as we learned it long before we came to college, where our slope is equal to the difference in the y values, that's the rise. So f of x sub i plus 1 minus f of x sub i over run which is the difference in the x values, x sub i plus 1 minus x sub i. That's the slope. Now I should point out at this point that the distance between our x values, so this distance here between x sub i and x sub i minus 1, we often define that as h. h is the interval, and that's equal to x sub i plus 1 minus x sub i. It's just the difference between the two x values, or the distance between the two x values. 
So oftentimes, when you write out your slope, like we have here, you write it out using h as the denominator. So what we've come up with here is what's called the forward finite difference approximation for the first derivative. Now, formally, we can write this in a couple of different ways. So our first derivative, f prime of x sub i, is going to be equal to f of x sub i plus 1 minus f of x sub i divided by h, h being your um, separation distance. An alternative way you can write this is this. You can say f prime of x sub i is equal to f of x plus h minus f of x, again, divided by h. In this case, x is going to be your x sub i value that we had on our graph. And x plus h would be simply the x sub i value plus the separation distance, which places you at the x sub i plus 1 location. So there are two alternative ways to write the same thing. So again, this is the forward finite difference approximation for the first derivative. The reason it's called the forward approximation is because your second x value is greater than your first x value. So x sub i plus 1 is greater than x sub i. Okay, so now back to looking at our graph here. Let's say we select a different x location. So let's say our chosen x location is here. We'll call this x sub i minus one. So x sub i minus one is gonna be equal to x sub i minus h, our separation distance. So we'll treat this as the same separation distance h along with f of x or along with x sub i minus one we're going to have a corresponding f of x value which will be f of x sub i minus one now we can approximate the derivative at x sub i by drawing a line a straight line between those two points so similar to what we did before for the forward finite difference method but now we're using a different x value and a different corresponding f of x value to make this calculation. So here, our calculation will look like this. Our slope between those two points is equal to f of x sub i minus f of x sub i minus 1 divided by, again, our separation distance. So this is the second approximation of the slope at x sub i. And we can formally write this out as well to make what's called the backward finite difference approximation for the first derivative. So formally, this will be written out as follows. f prime of x equal to f of x sub i minus f of x sub i minus 1 divided by h. So notice it's similar looking to the forward finite difference approximation, but in this case, the higher value of x is the uh, x sub i, 
as opposed to x sub i plus one. Um, now going back to the original slope that I wrote out here, I wrote it out as h, but just for completeness, we could look at this as x sub i minus x sub i minus one, which is of course h. So an alternative way to write out this backward finite difference approximation for the first derivative, it's gonna look like this. Again, f prime of x sub i equals uh, f of x minus f of x minus h. Again, divided by h, h being the separation distance. So again, two different ways of writing the same thing. And this gives us our backward finite difference approximation for the first derivative. Let's look at our graph one more time. Just gonna move this out of the way here. Oops, I left behind a parentheses. There we go. Okay, so we'll look at our graph one more time here. So now I have my x sub i value. My x sub i plus one value, my x sub i minus one value. And then the corresponding f of x values that go with each of those. So another way that I can approximate this slope is by drawing the straight line between my f of x sub i minus one and f of x sub i plus one. So we draw a straight line along here, connecting those. Now I can find the slope of that line and that's gonna be my approximation for uh, the derivative at x sub i. So the slope here is gonna be f of x sub i plus one minus f of x sub i minus one. That's the rise over run, which is x sub i plus one minus x sub i minus one. Now, the distance between x sub i plus one and x sub i minus one, that's the distance from here all the way to here. That's a distance of two times h. So our denominator here, our denominator here for the backwards finite difference and the forwards finite difference, that denominator is h. The denominator here, is actually 2h. So when we write this out formally, we'll write it out as follows. And this is what is called the centered finite difference approximation for the first derivative. And it's written out as follows. An alternative way to write it would be like this. So this gives us our centered finite difference approximation for the first derivative. So now we have three finite difference approximations for our first derivative here. Each one is a perfectly valid method for approximating the, approximating the derivative at x equals x sub i. Um, the forward and backward finite difference method tend to be less accurate than the centered finite difference method. So if we take a look at our graph here, look real closely at it, we have our three approximations. Each of them are worth a straight line. So we've got this straight line here, 
which represents our forward finite difference method. We have this line here, which represents our backward finite difference method. Then we have this third line here, which is our centered finite difference method. With the third line, if you project that line, make it tangent to the function at x sub i, you'll find that that is actually a more accurate representation, just graphically, of this function slope at that location. Now, that added level of accuracy comes with the cost. And that cost is this. If you look at your um, functions, the forward finite difference approximation and the backward finite difference approximation both include the original x and f of x values. So we have f of x sub i here, f of x sub i here. In the centered finite difference, f of x sub i does not actually appear in the function at all. That adds to an additional challenge when you're using this uh, finite difference approximation to uh, estimate a derivative in a real life situation where you may actually need that x value. Okay, so until now, the numerical methods we've talked about have been uh, iterative methods. So in an iterative method, you make a calculation, use that result to drive the next calculation, and you refine your result until you uh, receive a result that is at a level of precision that meets with your tolerance. The finite difference method works a little bit differently. This is not an iterative method. You can increase the accuracy of your finite difference method by making the h value smaller. So a smaller h value will result in a more accurate um, solution. There are times when you're making calculations using the finite difference method where uh, it is not possible to shrink your h value any further. At that point, then you need to decide which finite difference method is going to work best for you. You're going to get a higher level of accuracy with the centered finite difference method. However, it is extra work to use the centered finite difference method. So um, your application is going to really determine which method you're going to use. And your application is also going to determine what your h value, the what possible h values you can use. Um, of course, you want to use the smallest available h value that you can because that's going to give you the most accurate response.